Hiya, it's Robin here. It's lovely to see you. Now, I hope you've had a good half term and maybe managed to find some different things to do. Perhaps you ate a few pancakes too. The Open the Book team have been busy again and this week they will tell us the story of the Good Shepherd. So it's time to hand you over to Mandy and the team. Hello everyone. Welcome to our next Open the Book film. It's hard to believe that it's four weeks since we made our last film. Today's story is about losing something. Have you ever lost anything that's important to you? What did you do? How did you feel about it? If you have time, stop the film and talk about it. I thought that when I introduce everybody today, I would ask them if they had ever lost something and what they did about it. So let's find out. Hello, Vivian, and who are you going to be in today's story? I'm going to be a very good person. Have you got a story about having lost something and how, how did you feel about it? Yes. Every year we holidayed at East Wittering with a house on the beach and every morning before breakfast, my older brothers and sisters went for a swim and I paddled and my younger brother played with his bucket and spade in the sand. The older children came in from their swim and I joined them. But where was Nick? Nick was nowhere to be seen in either direction. Eventually, a woman came towards us along the beach with a small boy beside her. Nick had wandered into a nearby house and even shared some breakfast. <laughs> the relief of all the family was unimaginable. Oh, I can imagine. Thank you very much. Hello, Margaret. What about you? Hello. I'm a very good person, too. Margaret, have you got a story about losing something? I have. And again, it was happened on a beach and I was about seven. When I was six, I desperately wanted my own watch. And my mum and dad said, well, if you can tell the time by the time you're seven, you can have a new, brand new watch for your birthday. I opened a lovely little box with a beautiful, brand new watch in it. In the summer holidays in August, we also went to the beach. And my mum said, oh, Margaret, you've got your watch on. And I was very near the edge of the water at the time. She said, do take your watch off. You'll get it wet and it won't work. So, of course, I took it off. And... Presumably, I just put it down the rock at the edge of the water. An hour later, we came up from the beach. Mum was sitting on the, on the mat on the beach. She said, um, and your watch, where is it? <gasps> oh, no. So we ran back to the edge of the water. Of course, the tide had come in by then. We searched and searched the rest of the afternoon, but we never, ever find my watch. Oh. And I felt so unhappy. And of course, I couldn't get another watch until my next birthday came round and I had to wait another whole year before I could get my next watch. Oh dear, well thank you very much for telling us those stories. Hello Mandy, who are you going to be in the story this time? I'm going to be a bad person. And Glyn, what about you? I'm going to be a shepherd. Have either of you got a story about losing something? Uh, yeah, I would like to uh, share a story that happened um, a few years ago now, when our son was about three years old. He's 30 this year, so that gives you an idea how long ago it was. We were staying with my mum and dad, and my dad would go out for a walk. Unfortunately, he left the gate open. So Sam, my son, thought it would be a good idea to see where Grandad had gone. We did not realise straight away what had happened, but it soon dawned on us that Sam was missing. And you can imagine the panic that set in, especially when we realised that the gate was open. And so we dashed off down the road to see if we could find Sam, couldn't find him anywhere. We lived quite close to the town centre in Tiverton. And so I went up into the town centre and was getting frantic by this stage. 
And eventually I looked down between two shops and I saw this little chap walking up quite happily between the two shops looking for his granddad. I cannot tell you the relief and the emotion I felt when I saw him. I ran down to him, picked him up and gave him one of the biggest hugs I think he's ever had. So that was my, my story of losing something and it was a scary moment. Hello Christopher. And who are you going to be in our story this week? Well, I'm going to be Jesus. And have you got a story about losing something or someone? Yes, yes, I've got a story about how we lost our dog. The dog we had in those days was called Dida. We went out on a family outing to Naroche Forest and she wandered off. And uh, and we, we lost her and we searched all over the forest and we, and we couldn't find her. And the time came we had to go home to get the children home. Uh, and then we went back again in the evening and searched in the darkness with torches when everything was quiet, when she could have heard us. We couldn't hear any dog and she obviously couldn't hear us. And we went home very disappointed and very upset. We lost our dog. What about the ending of the story? Did it end well or did, did it have a sad ending? Well, it had a happy ending, but it was rather slow coming. And so we put a photograph of me with her in the paper and somebody saw it and got in touch so all ended well it ended very happily and she spent the rest of her life with us thank you for telling us that story when jesus talked everybody came to listen he would tell stories to help them understand what god was like people who thought they were good and people who were not so good they all came but sometimes the good people thought that Jesus shouldn't have anything to do with the bad people. I wonder what he said to them. Let's find out in a story called The Good Shepherd. I'm a very good person. I look after the temple and make sure that the bad people are kept out. And I am also a good person. I mean, I go to the temple and say my prayers. That's if I'm not too busy doing something else. I say, have you heard? That man Jesus is talking to people again. I know. We don't really need to go to listen to him because we are so good. But I suppose it wouldn't do any harm. Have you heard? That man Jesus is in town. He won't be interested in the likes of us. I mean, look at us. Yeah, I mean, I sometimes steal things and oh, I'm afraid I don't always tell the truth. I suppose we could go and listen to him. Wouldn't do any harm. What? We don't want the likes of them coming to listen to Jesus. Absolutely not. I don't like that idea one bit. Hey, Jesus, you say you come from God. You call him your father. Yes, so why are you spending time with the likes of them? With bad people? Hmm, well, you see... Well, put it like this. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was this shepherd. Just look at my lovely sheep. I have got 100 of them, and I know each of them. Look, there's those with the black faces. The dirt don't show up on them. Then there are the stripy ones. They look like zebras. Oh, then we have some of the multicolored ones. That was my idea to help me to try and identify them more easily. Then we have some spotty ones, which look like Dalmatians. Then the longhorns. Now you've got to keep out of the way of them, because they do try and charge you. And then, of course, there are the woolly ones. Everyone's favourite because they're nice and soft and cuddly. Then we have the long ears. 
They always listen to my voice. Then there are the fat ones. Probably feed them too much, I think. Then there are the sleek ones, who are the super smooth ones of the flock. And then there are those dazzling white ones. They always look so clean. Every night, after he'd called them in from the fields and gathered them in their pen, he would count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. But one night, he found himself a sheep short. He never got to a hundred. Ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine. What? Oh no, one of them is missing. Oh. Which one is it, I wonder? The shepherd looked around the pen. Oh, he's missing. Oh, I can see. It's Bramble. I might have known it. It's Bramble that's gone missing. T typical. Well, what do you think he did? Did he say to himself? Oh, I've got 99 sheep left, so who cares if one's lost? Doesn't matter. Of course not. He cared for the missing sheep as much as all the rest. Off he went across the, the fields and the hills looking for that lost sheep. He looked behind rocks. He looked down in the deep ravines. I can't find that sheep anywhere. Where's Bramble gone? And finally, when he'd almost given up hope, he found the lost sheep trapped in a tangle of thorns. So the shepherd picked Bramble up and carried him safely home. As the shepherd went past his friends' and neighbours' houses, he called out, Come to my house. My sheep was lost and now it's found. We're going to have a party. You asked me why I talk to people who've done bad things. Well, it's because God himself is like that shepherd and we are all his sheep. Some of us are like the sheep that stayed in the pen, but some like these robbers and thieves wander away and get lost. So someone has to look for them and talk to them. And when they come back to him, well, God throws a great big party too. Did you notice that apart from Jesus, we weren't wearing costumes this time? That's partly because it's a bit tricky for us to get our costumes at the moment. But it's also because although Jesus told that story a very long time ago, he's also telling it to us now. God cares for us so much that he doesn't want us to get lost. He wants to look for us, talk to us, and throw a party for us. Close your eyes and think about how you felt the last time you lost something special. Were you really pleased when you found it? And now I'm going to say a prayer. And if you want to make it your prayer, say Amen after me. Dear God, it's good to know that you will always look after us and listen to us. Thank you for telling us that wherever we go or whatever we do, you are like the Good Shepherd and you won't forget about us. Amen. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the film and we hope to see you soon. Goodbye.
Our song of the week this week is by a lady called Julie Miller. And the song is called What Would Jesus Do? She starts a song by reading the story of the Good Shepherd from the Bible. I've matched the song with an animation of the story from an amazing website called Max 7. And I've had to fade the song out as the full version runs for over six minutes. So I thought three and a half minutes is enough for us all. Enjoy. So Jesus said to them, what do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth. He is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be. To a child in the dark Homeless one in the park Not attracted to pleasant places Our tricky question of the week this week is, why do we pray? I'm going to leave you to listen to what Rev Glynn has to say. And then if you'd like to, you can talk about it afterwards. So I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now. Bye. Glynn, tricky question this week. Why do we pray? I think prayer is very important. It's not a case of it being a shopping list. God, give me this. God, give me that but it's more about being in a relationship with him. Just as when you go home, you will talk to friends or family. In the same way, when I pray, I am talking with God. I am engaging in a relationship with him. So it's not just me talking to him, it's also me listening and being quiet as well, being still in God's presence. It's all about relationship.